brief update of what Invest Atlanta is doing during the COVID uh, pandemic. We have set up a business continuity loan fund um, that has reached over 550 small businesses in the city. Um, and we currently have those loans going through our underwriting process um, and anticipate additional funding to come through our BCLF program in the near future. We are also working on other relief efforts that will go deeper to touch some of our creative industries. And we're looking at additional financial incentives for our large companies in the city to make sure that the entire spectrum of business in the city is taken care of. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we're laser, laser focused on bringing resources and support the, to the community of startups and scale ups in our community and small businesses alike. To that end, we've partnered with the startup ecosystem to bring you this info session today. We'd like to thank the Technology Association of Georgia, Metro Atlanta Chamber, ATDC, ATV, Silicon Valley Bank, Women's Entrepreneurship Initiative, and MailChimp for their support in pulling this together and spreading the word across the city. Now let's get started with a recovering banker and head of eight Atlanta CEO Council, Ashish Takur, who will be sharing his theory on surviving COVID and thoughts on family planning for startup and scale up founders. And additionally, we have Kristen Slink from ATDC on the line today, and she's going to be telling us some additional information that will be helpful around the COVID pandemic. So thanks to both of you for joining us today, and I'll turn it over to Ashish. Good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Georgia. I went for a run this morning and the pollen is giving me a light cough, so please bear with me. Ashish means blessings in my language and seems to be meaning marijuana in most other languages, so I had to start off on a fun note. Now, I want to take a moment for all of us to be present. So at the count of three, I want you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and when you release, I want you to say what's on my shirt. Om. Okay? Again, the count of three, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and you release with Om, and then we'll begin. I'm watching you, so close your eyes. Okay. One, two, three. Take a deep breath. Excellent. I hope that helped. So let me begin. Our coronavirus disease of 2019, also known as COVID-19 Family Plan, was inspired at the intersection of a friend who is a healthcare entrepreneur, frontline healthcare hero, CEO, that, that intersection as well as a priority of our own family health. How we at Atlanta CEO Council are thinking about the world right now is divided into three pillars. The first is healthcare, learn about the virus and how to protect yourself. The second is economics, learn about how the virus is affecting the global economy and your personal financial situation. And the third pillar is philanthropic. How can we help healthcare workers, families, and the population at large? So let me frame the next nine or 10 minutes. I'll take two minutes to tell you where we are finding comfort during this pandemic four minutes to read the plan, and about three minutes of closing comments on what the new normal might look like and what our CEOs are facing during these challenging times. Then Kristen Slink will conduct the Q&A, but I also want everyone listening to provide suggestions for improvement to the family plan. Let's build a better plan together on this Facebook Live session. My wife, Renica, is an industrial engineer from Georgia Tech, and we call this plan process improvement. So let me begin. Where are we finding comfort? Dr. Tony, Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, and Dr. Sanjay Gupta are three places we're finding comfort. Physicians, scientists, and philanthropists. They are calm, evidence-based, with decades of mentoring past presidential administrations. I'm finding comfort in my family and friends on the front lines. Also, this is the year of nurses. This is the 200-year anniversary of the founder of modern, modern nursing, uh, Florence Nightingale. She was born in 1820. Dr. Fauci, who is a top infectious disease physician, his wife is also a retired nurse, which gives me even more comfort in his words. This is a very difficult time. I do want to stress that mental health is equally, if not more important than physical health. My father says, if you're stressed out, it's hard to work out and eat well. Mental health, supremely important. 
please be present and be there for each other. It's a very difficult time right now. And I want to take a moment just to give everyone a virtual hug just for a second. It feels good, doesn't it? Next, I want to talk about the key qualitative COVID-19 measures that we are following at the council. Number one, increasing COVID-19 diagnostic tests. Number two, increasing antibodies testing. Number three, finding a predictable treatment to decrease mortality and morbidity rates. Number four, a vaccine being the longer term solution. And five, the different levels of illness uh, with patients who can potentially infect others. And those are asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe, and critical. So I'm four minutes in, and now I'm gonna read the plan that I have posted on social. So here we go. One week ago, one of my healthcare heroes and frontline heroes friend, Dr. Avinesh Barr, who currently works in the ICU in Florence, South Carolina, and his wife works in the ICU in Macon, Georgia. He asked me, Ashish, do you have a family plan for COVID-19? I was caught off guard. It felt like the first time my financial advisor or attorney asked me if I had a will or living will in place. So I can't thank Dr. Barr enough for helping our family create this plan. So first, know your primary care physician's name and number. I'll refer to them as your PCP. Add that name and number to your favorites. Know that number. If your phone fails, you can use someone else's phone. So know the actual phone number and contact them via your healthcare portal today. If you don't remember or don't have a PCP, find one ASAP and complete a basic telehealth assessment. Personally, our Emory PCP portal communication, uh, I've been going back and forth, is handled by a supervisory RN. I feel very comfortable. She's provided us basic information, we don't get special treatment, and we're forming great relationships with healthcare administration and staff. And it works wonders when you treat healthcare, uh, uh, healthcare staff and administrators, doctors and physicians with respect. They're on your side. There's a saying by Michael Scott from The Office, for those of you who watch The Office, he says, Blue collar, white collar, I'm collar, I'm collar blind. So that means basically treat everyone with respect. Next, have a communication plan with all family members, neighbors, and friends. Next, pack an overnight bag in the event you're admitted to the hospital. If you have young kids, make arrangements with a few trusted neighbors to watch them if the need, the tra need to travel to the hospital arises. There's a good chance you won't be able to communicate much with physicians, nurses, and staff, so a communication plan is critical. <clears throat> Next, if someone in your house shows symptoms, okay, find a room with a bathroom to keep themselves quarantined. A good friend of mine, MK, turned his basement into a quarantine room. Uh, this is the time if you have a base, unfinished basement, finish it. Clean the entire house and have yourself and the infected patient wear personal protective equipment when leaving, picking up food and other necessities outside their room door. Track the symptoms electronically or on paper as often as possible. The more data points, the better. Time, stamp, everything, the fever, the notes, everything, any symptoms. If the symptoms get worse, use an online COVID screener. Apple has a good one. And then call your PCP who will ask similar questions as the online screener. Your PCP should be able to direct you to the COVID-19 entrance of the hospital if one exists. Print and carry along all relevant personal documentation and something called the PUI COVID-19 documentation, person under investigation. You can just Google that, PUI COVID-19, person under investigation. On the way to the hospital, ensure you and the symptomatic patient have PPE gear on and drop the patient off at the correct entrance for COVID-19 patients if one exists. At that point, the patient is in the hands of the hospital. Now's the time to execute your family communication plan. Know all the phone numbers to call, public health hotlines, your primary care physician, family, neighbors. Know their actual phone numbers, you know, 404, 395, whatever it is. Um, document every communication between you and the hospital. And once the patient is discharged, continue self-isolation at home, I would say for two weeks, in a similar manner to the pre-infection plan. So be safe and be well. That is the plan. Now I'm gonna spend, and we're about the eight minute mark, I'm gonna spend some time on what our CEO council CEOs are seeing, and then an insight into the new normal, and then I will wrap up and we'll get into Q&A. And again, in the Q&A, I really want you to offer suggestions to our plan. 
So what CEOs are saying? So first, they're ensuring their employees' safety, health, and morale stays positive. Next, they're communicating with their boards, investors, and customers. Third, company operations are obviously suffering, so cash is, cash is king, and loans through stimulus bills, the stimulus bill, are critical. S believe it or not, a couple of CEOs who've traveled a lot recently have tested positive and they've recovered. Why have they recovered? They say the grace of God, good health, and their genes. As employees move to a work from home environment, it's necessary to have cybersecurity hygiene. Uh, one of our CEOs had a $3 million deal with Carnival Cruises, completely disappeared. Another co-founder has created a national COVID-19 community vulnerability national map. Another CEO has created a COVID-19 Atlanta hospitality task force. So overall, our CEOs are calm, collected, inspiring, leading, and, ex and executing. Now, insight into the new normal. I'm just gonna kind of have bullet points here. Telehealth is here to stay. Humans are deciding who and what is really valuable in their personal and professional lives. Rehiring will take some time. The novelty of work from home won't completely wear off, so new company policies will allow more work from home. We might see virtual courtrooms, virtual voting, virtual legis legislative systems. Online education and campuses will be here to stay. Hopefully humans get healthier and continue to treasure their family and friends. Travel and hospitality will take time to recover. When will you feel comfortable to travel by air or train? Is it safer to, to go to school than a concert? Uh, I firmly believe schools K through 12 can open up. Our kids need that social, social interaction, um, but you as parents will have to decide that. This will be the decade of healthcare. We will see an uptick in innovation uh, and hopefully in employment. It could go the other way based on the stress and anxiety of unemployed and frontline hero, front heroes. So that's our take on the new normal. So what I'm pleading is talk to each other with love, happiness, and balance it with the facts. Complain with intelligence. <clears throat> Dr. Fauci mentioned that there will be some subliminal PTSD after this event. Hang in there. We're a strong nation after feeling so much pain. Many nations have, helped, have, have felt this pain and we'll get through this. And if you look behind me, what does that say? Everything will be okay. So many thanks to the partners that set this up. Thank you to ATDC, Metro Atlanta Chamber, Technology Association of Georgia, Atlanta Tech Village, MailChimp, Silicon Valley Bank, Independent Community Bankers Association, and Women's Entrepreneurship Initi Initiative. I'll stop here, over to Kristen Slink for Q&A, as well as suggestions to improve the COVID-19 family plan. We did this in 11 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kristen Slink. I am the FinTech Catalyst over at ATDC. If you've never heard of our organization, we are the largest incubator in the Southeast. We work with early stage companies to help you um, from conception to scale, and we don't take any equity. So if you need to learn more, just look me up and ask me some questions. Uh, one thing I did want to add to you, I think mental health is a big topic and something near and dear to my heart. Um, what I wanted to get out there is there's things that you can control and there's things that you can't control. And I think a lot of focus on what you can control is really what we have right now. So focus on your happiness, your health, your safety, your family, everything will be okay. We'll get through this together. We're all going through it. It's not normal. I think uh, admitting that and realizing that kind of gives us comfort and I like that. Um, so <clears throat> some questions, I don't see any right now. Anyone have any suggestions for the plan? We do have one comment though. Uh, Minaj says, you have done your homework and thinks your kids have helped you with the props. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess what um what do you what do you think is the most important thing of the plan? Just just being prepared and, and knowledgeable about the different things that you can control. The most important thing is go create the plan now. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, there's already missing things that you've probably been procrastinating, right? Such as, you know, getting your um, physical done. So now you're gonna have to remember and scrounge for finding your primary care physician's name and immediately take those little steps. Um, it, takes, it takes a little bit of time, pack that bag, uh, encourage, the key thing is encourage other family members and uh, everyone else to have that plan. Uh, like I said, when, when I uh, started building this plan and I put it on social, um, 
in a minute, a dozen families that said, you know, we're going to create this plan today. So the key is to create the plan today. Awesome. And then what kind of things would you put in your bag or what kind of things do you have in your emergency bags? Um, so uh, iPhone charges, of course, uh, snacks, food, uh, laptop, uh, PPP equipment. Um, that's uh, and then, you know, clothes, soap, um, um, glo uh, wipes, uh, Lysol, um, quite a few things. Um, feels like I'm traveling somewhere, but <laughs> <laughs> not anywhere anyone wants to go, unfortunately. Right. Right. <laughs> and then how what's what's the best way to understand where the entrance is to get into the hospital safely if you do experience symptoms and need to go in for COVID? So that's best answered by the primary care physician. And if they don't know, you kind of prod them uh, to see if they can find out and they'll go, they'll go help you. Um, you know, the, the, the supervisory registered nurse that I'm uh, on the portal with, she responds within 12 hours or less. Um, so we built a pretty good relationship and she's actually, um, you know, uh, she does, you, you have to be careful publicizing those things, but um, it's probably better to talk over the phone with your PCP. And start dialing these numbers, the public health numbers, your hospital numbers, just to see how quickly you can get through. You don't want to panic when the symptoms start. You, you have to have that plan if the symptoms start. Yeah, that's really important. We have a great question here uh, from Michael. How do you navigate the conversation with your family without instilling fear? A lot of these things are really scary, especially talking about isolation and not being able to provide that comfort, um, keeping them isolated. How do you have that conversation? Wow, that's that's just that's that's a brilliant question. Uh, it's a very similar question to when uh, I was asking CEOs, how do you have how do you have empathy for employees who uh, you know are too scared to work, right? And their productivity decreases. Well, you just have to have empathy. I think one good solution is to have them see this video, so you don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Use this uh, as a tool. <laughs> well, I think uh, you know there, there's fear and there's paranoia, and try to trying to turn that fear into paranoia is probably the right the right thing to do <laughs> but you have to be calm evidence-based you yourself have to go already have executed the plan yourself once you do that it's really easy to communicate it to uh, others and say hey you just speak in a practical manner without instilling fear but you know I, with our kids my, my my son asked me you know how strict are you going to be and so at times you might be scared how strict i'm going to be it all depends you know on the current situation um, but if, if it takes fear to get someone to make to execute on the plan then by all means, scare them into the plan. But I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. And then does the plan also apply to founder CEO teams who are part of the company in addition to family? Oh, yes. Yeah. Besides business continuity, think about it as family continuity. Great question. Absolutely. And then just one more time, what items were needed at the hospital again? I know you mentioned uh, cell phone chargers, a lot of sanitation items, PPE. Um, just briefly go over that one more time. I think someone missed it. Oh, yeah. We have two kids. My, my wife's been pregnant twice. So think about that. You know, when you're headed to the hospital and you're about to have a baby, very similar. But I would just add, uh, we're in the mindset that we're going to get the virus. So we, we, we're, we're taking very, very many precautions. I would have that same mindset as you're traveling to the hospital and as you're in the hospital. Perfect. So having that, 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 that uh, personal pr uh, protective equipment is, is key, even if it's just uh, exam gloves. We ordered grocery gloves from Amazon, uh, you know, handing those out to the neighbors and so forth. Um, but you, you th that's really important to stay, uh, um, to stay clean while you're, while you're in the hospital. And in the hospital, there's, you know, um, there's, there's plenty of places to wipe your hands, wash your hands, um, uh, and get hand sanitizers. They're like in front of every door. So you just constantly have to be doing that. Uh, but I would recommend staying in one place. <laughs> Yeah, and I love the idea about a charger too because once you're in the hospital, you're alone essentially, right? And so yeah, and all the plugs will be taken by you know all the medical equipment. So you're you're going to need portable chargers. Portable chargers. Okay, great. Um, how about any anyone have any suggestions to the plan? Someone said thermometer. So maybe yeah. a thermometer oh, in wow. your bag. I'm writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> So on that note, might as well, you know, uh, have that medicine cabinet in your, you know, go, go ahead and have, you know, whatever you use for cough medicine, ibuprofen, thermometer. I, I think that's, that, that I'm going to add that to the plan. Yeah. Absolutely. Having those over the counter medications. Uh, it's allergy season. Have your allergy medication with you. Um, if you're a hypertension diabetic, have those medications with you, of course. 
um, hypertension, diabetes, asthma, um, uh, and obesity uh, is is where COVID nineteen loves to you know loves to attack. It's a cunning. It's a very cunning virus. Great. And then, what about uh, communication with people that you may have been exposed to? So, say you come down with symptoms, go to the hospital. Should you also have a plan in there in order to tell some people that you may have been around recently and have the com the family communicate that out? Yeah, hopefully you haven't been around too many people, right? Uh, it's really your immediate family members. The moment you see symptoms, you quarantine right away in that bedroom and bathroom. Um, and and hopefully you're already you know staying at home. But there is a chance if you have kids and they're playing and they're riding bikes and, and so forth and you know you're maybe 10, 12 feet from a neighbor. Yeah, it it, it doesn't hurt, but you don't want to cause panic in your neighborhood. Yeah, that's a really good point as well. Stay calm, and then others will be calm too, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why in, in the plan you have to have a communication plan for trusted neighbors, family, and friends. Yes, absolutely. Um, here's another question. What sources do you lean on the most to stay updated? I see more articles about the economy than health well-being. Uh, that's why. Uh, so, so great question. Dr. Anthony Fauci following him, Dr. Sanjay Gupta and Bill Gates. I was just kind of, I like the rule of three. So I, I kind of sit there. Um, keep in mind there are over 300,000 patients that have survived. That story is not really being told. Uh, I, uh, I think there's too much in the media about deaths uh, and not enough about sort of the, 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 the testing, the two types of testing, the treatments and the vaccine. And it, it's amazing, uh, you know, it, it, the innovation in vaccines. We're going to we hope to have one in maybe 17 months. Normally it takes five to eight years. Uh, to wow. have one. I'd also go encourage everyone to watch uh, Bill Gates's TED talk uh, in 2015 about the pandemic and uh, how he called this one and, and you know, what, what he's doing to, to change it. So. Uh, like I said, scientists, physicians, scientists, physicians, and philanthropists. Perfect. Um, someone has said for COVID nineteen, have Tylenol ready. So that was more. Oh, good. Okay. Very good. See, but, I love this. This is the stuff I want to know. Yeah, and I know early on, I had I had read that ibuprofen was bad, but then I just read an article recently saying that there wasn't enough uh, evidence to back that up. So I don't think that's something to be too afraid of. It's a good question to ask physicians right now. I, you know, Google. I, I, Googling and, and that, that might not be the best thing right now when you're looking at scientific evidence. I, I would speak to physicians, um, you know, uh, we, we, hopefully you've built some sort of healthcare network. I'm happy to introduce you to ICU physicians on the front line and the people I'm taking advice from are directly from physicians and scientists and biochemists. Yeah, and I also wanted to pinpoint too, as we're sitting here talking about resources and media, especially in regards to mental health, I think that a lot of us, especially early on, consumed a lot of media. Um, which does cause that panic, cause that you to focus on the things that you can't control. Do you have any advice there about how much media to consume, or you know what is what is a good amount? What's a what's a bad amount? Do you have any? Um, so I, I would take two days out of the week and just not read anything. Yeah, that's what I what we try to do. Yeah, take two days out of the week and then shut it off. Um, I might be at the point where I start deleting news apps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, there's there's a big underlying uh, message I think people are missing is the mental health. Yes, part. absolutely. I think that's not being talked about enough and it's something that we're all experiencing because this isn't something that we are prepared for, that we knew we've never been in this situation before. So it's really important just to take care of yourself and your well-being. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're, we're, we, we say at the council is health and safety first then go execute on the other problems to solve. Absolutely. Another good suggestion here, um, it's part of your bag to bring with you, a Ziploc bag to hold your phone. Ah, um, yeah. That would be a good idea. Um, let's see. A Ziploc bag to hold everything. <laughs> Someone said, so basically, don't listen to politicians. <laughs> what would you say about that? Yeah, so um, th there's a, I can't remember, Edelman or who, who had the, psych, uh, the, 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 the trust scale. So the, the, the trust scale up here, the, the people you trust the most down here, the people you don't trust. So at the top, will be uh, physicians, scientists, your doctor, uh, people who are similar to you. Uh, if you trusted your CEO before all this, you're gonna trust your CEO. Down here are politicians, media, government. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, let's see, I saw something else. Over this is not my take, this is a, a study. <laughs> yeah, uh, someone just wanted me to tell about ATC, ATDC again. So Keith, uh, ATDC is a startup incubator. Um, we're based at Tech Square. We work with companies all over Georgia in the state of Georgia. So you can reach out to me after if you have more questions. Um, 
I guess we're getting kind of close to time here. Are there any other um, tips or things that we might have forgotten to share with everyone, especially I think uh, in the realm of mental health, because it's not being talked about, any other big tips for people to follow? No, I, um, you know, before this, I tried to be as thorough as, as I could uh, in the time we had. And uh, I guess based on the, the, um, the questions, the good questions, and the, I wanted more additions than questions, and I had more suggestions than questions. So I, I got what I wanted out of this, which was great. Awesome. And then I would also add exercising. Um, there's no harm in going out for a walk, getting some fresh air, making sure that you're not cooped up too much. Um, I know it's been raining today. It looks really beautiful outside. So get some fresh air, get outside, move your body. Yoga is really great, kind of centers you. Um, just do anything that really benefits you mentally. La laughing helps. We started uh, having tickle fights every day. So <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> Because listening to uh, listening to a six year old laugh, you know, doesn't make me think about the pandemic. <laughs> no, we can learn a lot from kids too. And how I, I and I, oh, there's Amy. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Six year old laugh, you know, doesn't make me think about the pandemic. <laughs> no, we can learn a lot from kids too. And how I, I, and I oh, there's Amy. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So I guess we'll go over to Invest Atlanta's Amy Love to close out the meeting. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you so much for Amy, you're up. There's a bit of a lag, so I can't tell. Hi, I'm Amy Love with Invest Atlanta. And um, I just want to thank Ashish and Kristen. Fantastic dialogue learning there from you. We appreciate the virtual hugs as well. And I'd also like to acknowledge our partners who helped us put this together today. Um, I think you can also look to them as good resources. Um, we have the great support of the Technology Association of Georgia. Also, um, ATDC, of course. Um, the Atlanta CEO Council, of course. Metro Atlanta Chamber, Atlanta Tech Village, Silicon Valley Bank, the Women's Entrepreneurship Initiative, and MailChimp. Um, and I want to let you know that we will be, uh, we have recorded this, so we will be able to send it out to you. And we also um, will send the link to Ashish's COVID family plan for you to access. And if you aren't already on the distribution list for the Invest Atlanta Tech Innovation Group, then you can um, send an email to Lexi Newhouse and we'll post that in the comments on the Facebook Live feed, um, lnewhouse at investatlanta.com and we'll add you so you can get posts about future events. And we certainly hope that we'll be able to continue with these live events um, as um, we're bringing timely information, hopefully, um, uh, staying on top of the trends and the news. And um, again, we appreciate your participation. Feel free to reach out with comments and um, thank you. Be well. <laughs>